This box of golf balls is the most expensive balls I have ever tested on my channel. The 200 pound a box of 12 which means this ball in my ball cutter is roughly 17 pounds or $20. Imagine hitting that in the trees and never seeing it again. Now these golf balls aren't only the most expensive I've ever tested, they have some outlandish claims. They reckon they are the longest golf ball in the world, 15 to 20 yards longer than any other golf ball in the world. So we're gonna test that claim today. Before we do that, let's chop this one in half. All right, that hurt. Cutting a golf ball in half that's 17 pound. I might be the only person in the world that's ever done that with this ball. I mean, that's still eight pound each half. That's more expensive than any other golf ball. Now, before we explore the inside of this golf ball, because that's where the biggest technology story is, what are they? Well, they're called Atomax, and I saw them online last week and bought them straight away because I thought, I've never seen a box of balls so expensive in my life. I just thought there'd be some gimmick or it'd be some kind of high-end product. The fact that then I dived into it a little bit more and saw the technology, and I've got to be honest, when they arrived, this is possibly one of the most outstanding golf ball boxes I've ever seen. I don't particularly mean by the actual design, but the quality of this box. I mean, you can really tell it's hard, much firmer than a normal box of golf balls. Now, what's interesting, on the inside of this box, there is a world record committee statement effectively and apparently on robot testing these golf balls were substantially longer than major brands like 15 to 20 yards longer so how have they actually achieved that well it all comes down to the material they've used inside this ball so here's the story and this is according to the website inside this golf ball they're using a material called amorphous metal and effectively that metal is more bouncy it's more reactive when you hit the golf ball there's a lot of more spiel about how it kind of all the elements work together but that's the plain and simple answer to it these golf balls are supposed to be more bouncy because of the metal used in the ball now because of that these golf balls at the moment are non-conforming but i've heard rumors they're bringing out a conforming version next year now, when I say bouncy, at the moment, I'm presuming that's golf ball hitting club head. It might also mean that they go longer total distance because they bound down the fairway. We'll find out today. So let's have a look inside these golf balls. Inside, ugh, it's somewhat underwhelming for a ball that costs so much. You've got two layers there. We've got three layers because of the cover. This layer here this kind of inner core is apparently where that amorphous material is that bouncy metal the outside of the golf ball looks quite fancy it's got this kind of pearlescence finish it's fairly simple it just says Atoma atomax on one side and the logo on the other but then on the alignment line what's really strange and these guys must be the people that have made it it actually has two little characters one says paul one says jg who knows they must be the designers now i bought these from the website there's actually three versions there's a soft a medium and a hard and they're all dependent on your swing speed for my swing speed i normally swing about 110 miles per hour these are apparently the ones for me the hard ones now i always worry with the word hard on a golf ball i'm a very much feel play around the greens so I decided to test these on the putting green and chipping green first and uh, got to report they are rock hard golf balls. Like they felt so hard off the putter head. Just listen to the strike of these putts. I also hit a few shots around the chipping green as well. And again, they feel absolutely rock hard, even though granted I did chip one in. Humble brag. We got that one, yeah. So who are these golf balls for? Now, I don't think many people watching the video are going to pay 200 pound for a box of balls even if they do go 15 20 yards further i know i certainly wouldn't be doing even if these golf balls work however there is a golfer out there that likes the finer things in life like you see these gold drivers are thousands of pounds and often those products are for show let's be honest driving in your ferrari why why would you not want a gold driver What's interesting with this type of product though, it's not as if it's a luxury item as just a piece of jewelry. They're saying, even it says in the box here, you pay for gain. So is actually the investment gonna be an investment in your golf game? Let's go and find out. Let's go and get to the tee and smack some drivers. 
So let's not beat around the bush. The big thing we want to find out, are these golf balls ridiculously longer? I'm going to have a really simple test. I brought out a box of Pro V1s, Sightless Pro V1, which is pretty much regarded as one of the best golf balls in golf. I've actually bought them out in yellow. No difference to performance, but a way of being able to identify down the middle of the fairway, hopefully, which ball is which. Now, I'm going to hit 10 with each. I'm going to alternate so it's a really fair test. And what we're going to do, I've got GT, GC Quad set up, but I'm not going to obsess so much about the numbers unless I see dramatic ball change speeds with this ball, let's say. The real test is where these golf balls are going to be positioned down this hole. By one, are they going to be longer, these 200 pound golf balls, or are they going to be a complete failure? And the other thing as well, the technology apparently in the dimples of the Atomax apparently make these golf balls fly straighter and are more aerodynamic. So that's why I feel like doing it in a real life test, not in GC Quad, but in real life, that'll be where we see the best results, the most fair results. Without further ado, let's get to this. 10 shots each, which one's longest? All 10 shots hit, I definitely saw a difference in the ball flights, that's for sure. Let's get down there and see if there's any difference in the distances. Okay, walking down here, there's actually a lot of them are in the middle of the fairway. I'll come on to which one's longest in a minute. What I saw from the tee, ball flight, very different. Pro V1, how I'd expect. The kind of same ball flight I'd expect to hit, because I've used Pro V1s for so long. The Atomax golf balls, and I'm not exaggerating this, were almost double the height. They were going up so, so unbelievably high. And you could probably hear from the clips, outrageously loud. The loudest golf ball I have ever hit in my life. Now, before I show you the results, the GC quad numbers as well. And again, I was kind of keeping on them. Quite similar. Like ball speed and carry distance from GC Quad was quite similar. However, what did that transcend into real life data? Once the ball lands and rolls and everything else? Well, it looks like, if you spin round, you'll see loads of these golf balls. We've had a little bit of a head count. I think I've actually lost two. I think I've lost a Pro V1 and an Atomax in those trees. That's an expensive loss. However, if we look at what's longest and it's clear to see all the white balls are pretty much here, slightly shorter, but the two that are longest and probably even the three longest golf balls in that test were the Pro V1s. I did not find that these golf balls were the longest balls in the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And by the way, there's a golf ball in those trees. It's worth 17 quid if you find it. Please send it back to me. We'll see you soon.